Hello everybody, my name is Tango and today I'm going to introduce you to a new way to build a very compact iron golem farm. What you're looking at are six distinct villages vertically stacked directly on top of each other with only five spaces between them. Now, many of you that know a thing or two about villages are probably shouting at me right now saying, you noob, you can't do that. Villages can't be that close together. Well, I'm going to show you how it's done. First, I'll show you how to create the villages and then slide them into a nice vertical stack. Then we're going to reposition that stack directly into the center of our village spawning tower. With this six village tower, you'll be getting about 240 iron bars per hour. The design is very compact when completed. Now it'll take some space to build, but everything is cleaned up nicely by the time you're done. And also, since iron golems don't despawn, there's really no need to go AFK at a kill spot or anything like that to receive all the iron. Just check it once a night at your convenience. When considering where you want to put it, keep in mind that it can't be anywhere near any existing villages. Also, make sure it's not within 80 blocks or so of any door that could be considered a valid village door. And once it's done, you'll also have to be careful not to add any valid village doors in the area afterwards, or it could break some or all of the villages inside your tower. Personally, I'd make it about 100 blocks or so directly above your base, and have the golems fall through a long drop shaft into the collection room inside your base. Once you've decided where to put it, your first priority should be to start thinking about gathering your villagers together. Now, I'm not going to go into any of the details about how to get villagers from villages or how to move them around. There are plenty of videos on those topics already. If it was me, I'd probably set up a temporary infinite village spawner about 80 blocks below your tower's bottom floor and use a simple water elevator to get them into the tower. But regardless, get your villager situation taken care of first so they are breeding while you work. In the end, you'll need a total of 37 villagers for this project. Alright, once you've got your villager situation under control, the first step of building the village spawn tower is to lay down your bottom floor. So you're going to go ahead and build a 21 by 21 flat platform. Now, I happen to be building mine at y equals 70, um, basically just so I can get that bottom uh, sixth village, which will make sense in a little bit. Once you have your platform set up, go ahead and build a simple ring around it, just like so. Alright. Next you're going to go ahead and just put another layer on top of that. I prefer to use glass, but you are definitely free to use whatever you want. Um, as with any blocks in this design here, they are completely up to you. None of them are special or anything like that, so just use whatever you like. And before I go any further, actually, I forgot a piece here. Uh, I like to do a little something extra at the corners, just for just for looks. You're free to do so if you want, of course. Alright, for this next layer, you're going to come in just three blocks from the edge and do it on both sides. And out in the middle here, I recommend using a different type of block. And there should be 11 of them across. Now, these blocks are important because those are the blocks that your village doors are going to sit on. Um, for this adjacent side, just continue doing the normal. Spam down your glass or whatever it is you're doing. And then for the opposite side, this one I'm looking at right now, do the exact same thing as you would do on the other side. So come in three, come in three, and then drop down your 11 blocks. And continuing the pattern over here, just throw down some more glass. Alright. Now I should also mention that from one side of the tower, whichever one you want, you're going to need 128 blocks to work with. So if you pick this side, for instance, you're going to be 
building your villages way out here and eventually you're going to bring them in and slide them into the middle of your tower. So the important thing to note is the side that you are going to plan on doing that work on, where you have all that space, that is also a side that you want to build your platform for your doors. It can be either side, but don't try to work out in this direction, for instance. It's just not going to work. Next layer is real simple. Pretty much wherever there's glass, just add another layer of glass on it. Leave your door blocks uh, empty. It's very important that we don't place any doors down yet. Alright, continuing on, I'm going to switch away from glass now because this is actually going to be the floor of the next layer of the tower. Still leave space for your door there, obviously too high. Alright, so now at this point you can pretty much just go ahead and fill in the entire floor all the way across. Just be sure to leave a spot for your doors to stay. Alright, once you get that filled in you should have something that looks something like this. So what you've done at this point is you built one layer of the village spawning tower. So now, pretty much just need to repeat this unit five more times, stack it up vertically until you get six layers. So starting with the next level, just like you started the first step of the last one, build your ring around the outside. And continue on. And uh, I'll cut back when I have six layers. All right, she's looking good. It should have something that looks like this at this point. Our primary tower is now complete and it will be able to support up to six villages once we uh, get around to sticking them in there. We should note that the top, or I should say the roof, is a spawning pad for the topmost village. So I went ahead and just raised it up one more little level, added some glass. Uh, completely up to you. This probably isn't even necessary. You know, if you want, you can enclose it in. Whatever. Whatever works for you. Now, once we get our villages repositioned into the tower, we're going to uh, be punching a 3x3 three three hole right down the center through all the layers um, and adding water um, to funnel all the golem spawns down that hole. But that doesn't come till later, so we'll get there. Okay, the next thing we're going to do to the tower is add what I call the villager baskets. Uh, what you're going to do now is find a side of the tower that does not have door blocks. So it can be either side, doesn't matter which one it is. Uh, come over to the side that you pick and come to this floor right here and punch out the bottom two layers of glass until there are three pieces of glass left on either side. Now, I know I'm causing you to have to break some glass here, but this tutorial is just simpler this way. Uh, okay, so what you're going to do now then is come just inside and add a kind of a back wall here. There you go. So what's going to happen now is the villagers are going to stand right on that stone. So then go ahead and add another line here to start to hold them in. Once you do that, go ahead and add a water source block to both ends. And what this is going to do is it's going to kind of keep the villagers in motion, but more importantly it's going to keep them from glitching through the walls and uh, pushing each other through the walls basically. Uh, so once you have that, go ahead and finish up the wall here. And however you want to get your villagers in there is up to you but go ahead and add tent villagers in there now. Alright, and once they're all in there, close it up. 
Now we're going to need three of these uh, villager containers going down the side of the tower. Uh, between each one, skip a floor. So we got our first one there. We skip this floor, come down to here, and we're going to build one right there. And we're going to skip that floor, come down, and we're going to build one right there. Each of them holds 10 villagers, so go ahead and do that now. All right, you should have three villager baskets now with 10 villagers in each one. It looks something like this. Um, now, I will point out that, you know, while it looks like the uh, the glass wall that we kind of extended into our golem spawning area there looks like it might be taking up a valid uh, spawn location, uh, rest assured that it's not. Uh, the final block against the wall within that spawn floor is not a valid uh, golem spawn position anyway, so... No worries there. Um, the reason we did have to kind of push them into the wall a little bit here is because that's the distance necessary for them to detect this farthest away door block here. If they were one extra block on the outside of the wall here, those villagers would not detect uh, this door over here as a valid village door. You know, the alternative is we could have put some more villagers over on this side, but I figure that's a hassle. Now we just have only three places where we have to worry about getting our villagers. Okay, for this next phase of the tutorial, we're going to dial up the geek a bit and talk about the internal mechanics of the village system. All of this will be important to understanding the next phase of the tutorial when we start doing all the magic with village manipulation. And if you really don't want to listen to me babble for a while, then just move ahead to the next phase of the tutorial, but I can almost guarantee you that you'll be confused by what's happening. Alright, are you still here? Let's roll. The first thing I'm going to explain to you is how villages are represented internally in the system. Then, I'll show you what makes a valid village door. And finally, I'll describe the process of how a new door gets added to a village in detail. Alright, first, a village is represented internally by only three simple things. Its center point, its radius, and the set of doors that belong to it. The village doesn't know anything about buildings or houses or any of that stuff. It only cares about wooden doors, and those doors need to pass a very specific test. When checking to see if a door can be added to a village, the system will scan out five blocks in both directions that the door is facing. So for instance, one, two, three, four, five on the blue side, and one, two, three, four, five on the red side. Now, what it does is, for each of those colored strips, it counts how many blocks within that strip have direct access to the sky above. So in this case, the blue strip, all five blocks have direct access to the sky. And in this case, the red blocks all have direct access to the sky. So, when it adds up those totals, the blue side and the red side, if those totals are the same, then it is not a valid village door. If those totals are different, then it is a valid village door. So, for instance, as soon as I do that, it is now a valid village door because the red side still has five blocks with complete access to the sky, but the blue side now only has four. And continuing that pattern, if I do this, it is now, once again, no longer a valid village door because both strips have four blocks that are exposed to the sky. Now, nothing says those blocks have to be contiguous either. You could do something like that. And, whoops, something like that. Now, this is also not a valid village door because the blue strip has two blocks with direct sunlight exposure, as does the red. If I did that, now it becomes a valid village door because red has three and blue has two. Make sense? Good. Now, the other trick is a door doesn't automatically get added to a village as soon as it meets these criteria. It first must have a, val a, a uh, villager must see the door. So I've got a little area set up here. You'll notice what happens once I drop a village villager. Bang, a village is created. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering what's up with all these floating snowballs. Well, as you can see, 
I wrote my own mod just for this tutorial so that I could visually see how the village system works. This mod helped me a ton in designing the system, but it should also be very useful in clearly showing to you what is happening during the next phase of the tutorial. So what you're seeing, for instance, this snowball right there represents the center point of the village. All these other snowballs around the ring clearly show the radius of the village, and they all update in real time. Finally, you'll see a ender pearl here. Any door that is assigned to a village will periodically shoot out an ender pearl pointing at the village center point. That's why his is just pointing straight down in this case. But it's very useful to know which village all of the doors belong to by seeing where the ender pearl flies. So admittedly it's crude, but as you'll see it's going to come in very handy in the next phase. Now, once a villager discovers a new valid door, it will first try to add it to each of the existing loaded villages in the area. For a door to be added to an existing village, the distance between it and the center point of that village must be within the radius of that village, plus 32. So, for example, if a village has a radius of 32, then a door that is placed 64 blocks away will be added to that village. If the door is more than 64 blocks away, it will not be added. Another point that is extremely important to this tutorial is that when trying to add a new door to the existing set of villages, it will check those villages in the order that they were created. This means older villages are tested before newer villages. And finally, if the new door is not within an acceptable range of any of the loaded villages in the area, then a new village will be created consisting of just that new door. Okay, just a couple more points to make. The center point of a village is the calculated average position of all doors assigned to that village. So if a village only has one door, the center point of the village will clearly be that door's position. If a village has two doors, the center point will be the point exactly halfway between those two doors, and so on. To find the radius of a village, you need to find its door that is farthest away from the village center point. Then find the linear distance between that door and the center point, remembering to account for all three coordinates. Finally, the radius of the village will then be that distance plus one. However, a radius of a village can never be less than 32. So, for example, suppose we had a village with three doors laid out like this. Now, if that door on the right was 40 blocks away, then the radius of that village would be 40 plus 1, or 41. Now, if that door was only 15 blocks away from the village center, then the radius of the village would still be 32, since that's the minimum radius a village could ever be. Now, whenever a new door is added to a village, that village will recalculate its center point and then its radius, and this is the key to how we move villages around where we want them in the next phase. Okay, it's finally time to build some villages and break the laws of the universe. So, for this phase of the build, it's very important that you follow the steps exactly as I show you here. Uh, if you don't and something gets done out of order, you could have all kinds of issues, like villages could merge together, or villages could not move correctly where you want them to move to, and all of these things are going to be very subtle and non-obvious right away, so just follow things in the order presented here and everything should be fine. Um, the other thing is, unfortunately, you are going to need eight more villagers for this phase, and uh, you'll have to put them in the spots I show you uh, at the, when the time comes. What you're going to do next is define the edge of the tower that you previously identified as the one where you want to build your towers away from. You want to go to that side and go to the bottom most floor, find the center block, and stand right on it. And what you're going to do now is build straight out exactly 64 blocks. Okay. For your 64th block, I recommend using a different block type, uh, preferably the same kind that you use for your door blocks in your tower. 
Uh, from there now, go ahead and go one adjacent. And what we're going to do is build a pillar of these door blocks uh, going straight up. So from that block you just placed, go up five. One, two, three, four, five. And place another door block. And then continue going up five and placing a door block. And you're going to do that until you get six blocks. What we need to do now is add three villagers going down the length of the pillar. And what these villagers do is keep alive the village doors that will be on those blocks. If we didn't put them there, then the uh, villages that we're going to relocate on this pillar would disappear. So go ahead and place one block right there. And the villager on that block, when we put them there, will be able to see both of those door blocks um, himself. So each villager keeps two alive. So move down to the next set of two, put one there, and then move down to the bottom set of two and put one there. And then go ahead and get your villagers on each of those blocks. Now, they won't go anywhere because they've pretty much got nowhere to go, so you don't have to worry about them falling off or anything. Okay, the next thing to do is point out that as we go and place doors on these door blocks, which we're going to do later, we need to be consistent about which side uh, retains uh, exposure to the sun, um, as I described in the previous phase of the tutorial about how to create a valid village door. Um, so for us, it's going to be this side right here. So basically what that means is where those gold blocks are right there, nothing can be uh, coming out of any of these door blocks in this direction that is opaque. So all of these blocks need to have direct unobscured access to the sun. Okay, next from our bottom uh, door block on our pillar, from that bottom one what we're going to do is build another door block 64 blocks directly below that one. Um, and once we get down there we're also going to need to retain this uh, sunlight exposure uh, side that I was just discussing. Uh, so what I'm going to do as a little temporary helper is take a little block of sand and drop it right there. And now from here, pull up your F3 coordinates and drop down 64 blocks. Okay, I've got my new door block here, which is exactly 64 blocks below the bottom door block in the pillar. And what we're going to do now is build our first uh, village. And it's going to be obviously a uh, just a single door simple village. So let's go ahead and build that. Now I got my sand block there which is reminding me which direction I need to leave exposed to the sun. So I'm going to build my Faco roof in the other direction. Put the door down and throw the villager in there. Um, as long as you're still, um, you know, three or four blocks above ground level, the villager won't jump off. But if you if you are at ground level here, you'll have to uh, encase the villager so he doesn't run away. Um, but that's it. You see the village was created. Uh, you can see the snowball indicating the center point of the village. You can see the uh, ender pearl being kinda. You can kind of see it being shot out from the door toward the center of the village, indicating that that door belongs to this village. And you can see the uh, radius of the village is clearly indicated. And this is all done with uh, the mod I wrote, which I talked about previously. Okay, back up at the pillar now. From our second door block, what we're going to do is facing the tower. We're going to go ahead and build left. So face the tower, turn left and build 64 blocks out in that direction and build another door block like so and once you're there what we're going to do is build our second village like so and get your villager right there you'll see it creates the villager or creates the village you got the snowball you got the radius we're looking good back to the pillar 
Now we're going to move up to the third uh, third block here. And this time we're going to build directly away from the tower, so behind me, the direction I'm facing right now. But before we do that, we need to actually go up to the fourth block and place a block there. Otherwise, this villager will get tricksy and try and jump down and run away and make a break for it. So from the third block, 64 blocks directly away from the village tower. And when you get there, go ahead and build the third village. Alright, back to the pillar. Okay, onto our fourth block. This time facing the tower, we're going to build out to our right. Um, however, you will remember that this is the side that needs to retain uh, unobscured access to the sky. So for uh, this little walkway, just go ahead and use glass as the first five or six blocks or so. Glass does not block sunlight, so the villager down there at the ground level will, uh, the village down there rather, will remain intact. So from that block, 64 out. And go ahead and build another village. Alright, back to the pillar. Moving on to the fifth block now. Uh, normally we would build out in that direction now, toward the tower. Uh, but since the tower is actually there, we don't even really need to build anything. So head over to your tower at this point. And what we're looking for is the second row of door blocks from the top. And find the uh, center block there. And it is important that it's the center block. Um, go ahead and place a the door there. And you'll see a village is created because we already have our villagers alive. So they're the ones that are detecting it. There's already a roof in place. Um, this one's pretty much good to go. So that one was kind of a freebie. So head back to the pillar. And on to the... Uh, top door block now. This one's the easiest. We're just gonna drop a village directly right on top of that one. And there we go. Okay, so now what we have is six villages created around this pillar as close as they possibly can without any of their radiuses overlapping and without those villages merging together. Um, each of those villages has the minimum uh, 32 block radius. Um, and what's important is they were built from the bottom up to the top. So as you can see, we have our uh, first village that we created directly below the pillar. Um, then we have four villages that are created coming off of each side of the village. And then we have one built on top. All right, it's finally time to do some of the crazy stuff now. What we're going to do is take each of our six villages and slide them so that they are centered on each of our six door blocks on our pillar. Um, so what we're going to do to do that now is starting at the top, we're going to work our way down. And at each spot, I'm going to place doors on our door blocks. Um, obviously, this top one is already centered, so don't need to touch that one. So going down to the uh, second from the top, if I place a door there now, that's going to be uh, in range of potentially being added to two separate villages. Uh, the first one is obviously the one that's just five blocks above it. It's in range of that. Um, the second one, however, is the one exactly 64 blocks away uh, on the tower. Um, it is not in range of any of the other villages. Uh, for instance, it's not going to be in range of that village because this block here is 64 blocks away, so clearly this block is a little bit further, um, and so on down the line. So, now if you recall from the last section, when you add a uh, valid village door to the system, it will check all of the existing villages in the order that they were created to see which one to add to. So given that we could potentially be added to 
both of these villages here, this one and then the one in the tower, but the one in the tower was the one created first, so that's the one it's going to be added to. Now is when the mod I wrote really starts to come in handy. Um, so what you're going to see now is that village that was on the tower now has two doors. It has that one and it's got this one that we just added. So what happened is the center point has slid right between the two. That's represented by that snowball there. Now also what you can see is the doors are shooting out ender pearls toward the center of the village that they belong to. Uh, so you can see this door clearly belongs to the center village. Obviously gravity's affecting it. Um, and this door pointing out in the same direction also belongs to that village. And you can see the radius uh, of that village now basically uh, barely just encompasses that door. Moving on down the line to the uh, third uh, door block, what we're going to do is add a door to this block right here. And when we do this one, it's all the same principles. Uh, this one is going to now be in range of three villages, the two directly above it, as well as the one 64 blocks out in that direction exactly. Um, and again, remembering that the, door, the villages are checked in the order that they were created, we created that village out there before we created these two. So when we add this one, it's going to be added to that village. Eventually. There we go. You'll see it's shooting out ender pearls toward this direction. You'll see the uh, snowball has slid into position directly between the two doors, just like the last time. All right, continuing on, I'm not going to keep repeating these principles, but I'm going to add a door here, and it's going to be added out to that village. And there you can see, snowball updated, and the pearls are shooting out. Moving now to the next one, door's going to be added here. It's going to be added to that village, as you can see. And finally, the bottom one, we're going to add a door there, and it is going to be added to the village directly below it. Here you can see in real time the snowball now just jumped up and you can see the door down there is shooting its ender pearls straight up. Well, it's hitting a block, but you can kind of see. And the uh, door up there you can see clearly belongs to the village below it because it's shooting its ender pearls straight down. So what we have now are six doors on our pillar where each of those doors belongs to a different and distinct village. So what we're going to do now is a little bit more magic is go ahead and destroy all of our remote doors. And what that's going to do is make it so that we then have six villages that only have one door, that being um, perfectly aligned with our pillar. Um, so go ahead and break all your remote doors. Uh, it does not matter the order in which you do that in this particular case. Um, and once you break the door, you can give your villager a little love tap, because we don't need them anymore. And as you can see by the snowballs now, what we have is six villages perfectly stacked on top of each other five blocks apart. Next, now that we've got our nice stack O villages, what we're going to want to do is take that stack and slide it into the center of our village tower over there. So, to do that, what we're going to do is starting at the top and working down to the bottom, um, whichever level you're on, in this case we're starting at the top door, find the matching set of door blocks on the tower, and find the center door block on that uh, row and place a door there. Um, and wait for it to update. You can see it's already done so. This uh, door is now added to that village. Uh, this snowball right here now represents the center point of that village. And you can see that one radius has updated to be much uh, different than the others of those stacked to include that new door. Uh, once you've done that, or once you've waited your 10 seconds or so, given that you probably don't have my mod, um, just go ahead and add the rest of the doors. 
Now, I will say that once you add any doors to this tower, do not, under any circumstance, remove them. Um, go ahead and round to the back and add the doors for that same level as well. Uh, if you remove the doors, it will pretty much invalidate that entire uh, village that resides on that level, and it won't spawn golems. Um, oh, look at that. That, was, that didn't take long. Why don't you stick around for a little bit, and we'll make you a nice, warm lava bath. Sound good? Good. Okay. Anyway, um, as I was saying, or rather, in addition, um, assuming that you're doing this in survival mode, um, it's probably, quite honestly, much easier to just kind of, like, break the glass and run through the middle here and add the doors uh, from that side. It doesn't matter that, or it doesn't matter which way these doors are facing. They could be flipped around totally fine, nothing to worry about. Just make sure you replace whatever uh, glass or whatever you break to cut through. Um, now also, in addition, you should, looking in there, you should see that snowball that I'm more or less pointing at right now. That shows that that village has slid over here and is almost uh, perfectly lined up in the center of the tower. What's pulling it a little off center is the fact that we still have that one door way out there belonging to that village on the top uh, top story of our tower. So let's go ahead and kill it. And when you do, right away in real time now you see the mod um, updates the radius. It is now completely centered in the top story of the village tower. So moving on, let's go down to the second uh, door down. So given they're on the second door from the top, find the second row of uh, door blocks from the top and place the door in the center. There you go, you can see it's linked up. You can see pretty much all the same thing. Once that's happened, or once you've waited your time, repeat the process and add the doors. Again, do not remove the doors for any reasons once they're in place. All right. Well, we got another guest already. You can see how well it's working. Um, so, continue this process for all of the uh, villages and take them all the way down. So when you're done, you should have all your villages centered in the tower. And there they are. All six villages have been slid into the tower. Um, at this point, you can go ahead and pretty much just destroy any of the walkways or the pillar, anything that was left out there. All that stuff is useless to us now if it's not directly uh, part of our tower which is pretty much the beauty of this design, is now we're going to have a six-village uh, iron golem spawner and in this nice little compact package. Um, so at this point, I just want to kind of poke my head in here just to show you what's going on. You can see the snowball, um, I hope you can see it maybe, is directly centered in the village, and you can see the ender pearls all shooting in, pointing to that snowball, and each level is exactly the same. Snowball floating in the middle, and her pearls shooting in. Um, but with that said, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and disable the mod because it is shooting pretty close to a couple hundred ender pearls all the time here, and I don't want it to slow down the video. All right, I'm back. We are now ready to start adding the water to our tower and punching the hole through. So, to uh, do the water, let's start at the very top of the tower, the first thing we're going to do is add three blocks in the corner of or three blocks like this in each of the corners. Alright, once you got that, go ahead and add water source blocks all along the perimeter. Make sure you get all of them. And go ahead and add one in the back corner of uh, those three blocks there, like so. And then continue adding along the bottom. One in the back corner. And so on. Alright, you should have something that looks like this now. Uh, if so, go ahead and break those little three block patterns. 
they were there basically just to make sure you didn't create infinite source blocks across the whole level. Alright. That's pretty much what we need to do for one layer of water. And you'll see we have a nice 3x3 three three hole here waiting for us to be punched out, so we'll go ahead and do so now. Carrying any friends you have along with you. Okay. Now you're going to repeat the same thing for all of the levels going down. The only thing I would say is to these interior ones, I would also recommend adding uh, some torches in those blocks there, or wherever you want. Um, basically just aesthetic purposes, but this way at night you can kind of peek in and get a clearer vision of what's going on. Alright, get all your water in it and I'll, uh, I'll see you then. Okay. For the bottom level, I recommend not punching the 3x3 three three hole all the way through. Uh, that way we can still continue to collect golems while we build our collection unit, which we're going to do next. Uh, however, instead I do recommend punching uh, opposite corners out. This way the golems can't fit through, but we'll be able to identify where that drop shaft is supposed to be from below, which is what we're going to have to do next. Um, the only other point I'd like to point out is the... Uh, the levels that have the villager baskets on it, you do have to uh, tuck the water sources underneath that kind of ledge there, all the way up against the back wall. Um, keeps the water consistent and keeps it all uh, stopping right at the edge of the drop shaft where it should. Uh, okay, but once you got all your water in, you should have something that looks like this. And you are done with your tower. All right, now what we're going to do is build the glass drop shaft for the golems to fall through. And if you punch holes at the, uh, the bottom level, like I suggested, on opposite corners, you can easily see where that drop shaft is going to be. So go ahead and ring that with glass. Like so. And now continue doing that until you have at least... 10 levels of glass. Okay, should have something that looks like this now. The next step that we're going to do is get inside here and we're going to add four levels of lava held up by signs so that when the golems fall through, they're going to fall through each of those four levels of lava slowly and burn for a ton of damage uh, so that when they're done falling through, they'll basically just have a few hearts left and it'll make it easier for us to kill them. So. Coming up to uh, just below the ridge here, go ahead and start placing some signs, three on each side there, one and one, and then go ahead and double up the last one, and now what you have is nine signs uh, that basically make it so that no lava can fall through this level. Uh, once you do that, um, go ahead and, and be careful here. Uh, go ahead and place lava at opposing corners, and you should have a nice tier of lava there. Now, we're going to alternate every other level now, so come down two from your other level of signs, and repeat. And then go ahead and place your lava again. Now, obviously, the lava does not burn the signs, so you have nothing to worry about. Uh, keep doing that now until you have four levels of lava. Okay, you should have something that looks like this now. Uh, now, the next step is to decide uh, how far down you want your uh, collection floor to be. Uh, now, keep in mind that iron golems do not take falling damage so you know if you built this tower way up in the sky you could theoretically drop these guys down you know a hundred blocks all the way you know into the center of your base if you want so it's totally up to you it just means you know how far down you want to build this uh, this drop shaft um, the only thing I'll say is it does have to be at least eight blocks below the uh, bottom sign here just for enough room for us to build the device which we're going to do now so 
Uh, I've already got two blocks below my sign, but just for to have some space, I'm going to come down another eight blocks from that. All right. Now from there, I need to uh, build a three by three where my drop shaft is. All right. Now, whichever side you want the opening of your collection area to be, uh, go ahead and just build another three. So what you should have basically is a three by four, uh, three by four platform now. Uh, from there, go ahead and put a, a ring of stone around it or whatever block you choose. All right. Um, once you got that, go up four blocks, over three, and connect it. Now go inside, and what you're going to do is take this stone up two blocks all the way around. Now from there you're going to add six signs on the uh, second block off the ground, like so. Three on both, or three on each side. And what these signs are going to do is they're going to hold the end of our lava blade so that it, it uh, just kind of floats in the air without falling down. Uh, from there now, take the back wall and go up another four blocks. Two, three, four. Okay. Now from there, take those corners and come out three. Alright, now you're going to need some sticky pistons. And put those pointing face down on each side, and then go ahead and put just normal blocks on top of those. Um, all right. I went ahead and added a little platform for us to stand on and lit the area up a little bit. Uh, okay, next thing you're going to do is um, some decorative block maybe come out like so. Go along the top. And, wow, well, weird lag there. Alright, like so. Alright, you can come down now and go ahead and add a lever right there. This is what's going to toggle the killing device. Um, now, take half slabs and Add upside down half slabs right there. Very important. That's what keeps the golems from walking out. I'll go ahead and add a couple more lights here just so we can see. Okay, let's finish things up. Fly over to the uh, back now, and you'll see you got your row of stickies there. Uh, from right there, come out four blocks, pretty much right along the side of your uh, sticky pistons. Do the same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four. Now you're going to need some redstone, like so, and on top of those four blocks you just placed on both sides. That's going to supply the power to your pick or sticky pistons. Uh, so right now you should have a working device closed, open. All right, all you need to do now is add the lava. So Lava flows from its source block, it will flow up to four blocks away. So we want three blocks here, and we're going to put our source blocks on these three blocks right there. So that they'll flow one, two, three, and then hang over one on top of the signs. Um, but we also want to add a little extra around it. So go ahead and build that up. And then go ahead and place your three lava blocks. And then you can also cover it up. You know, obviously don't use any uh, flammable blocks in this design. All right, other side. Repeat the process. You got uh, three blocks. That's where our source is going to be. Give it a one block extra area to hold it. Drop your three source blocks. 
and go ahead and cover it up. Alright, so that's what it looks like when it's open now. The lava blades uh, poke one block in um, at a height where it will basically uh, burn the head off the golems, which is exactly what we want, but you're also free to walk in here as long as you don't jump so you can walk in here and collect all your iron. Turn it off, the blades go away. So this is how you would uh, collect the golems if you wanted to build them up without killing them. And then turn the blades on. Wait a couple seconds. There you go. This is also your auto kill mode, so you can turn it on just to kill them and turn it off, or you can just leave it on all the time if you want. Okay, all we have left to do now is just connect our uh, glass drop shaft to, uh, to this area. There we go. Okay, all you have to do now is break the hole in the bottom of your tower floor and enjoy the show. You should have a nice collection of golems built up waiting for you. Once they've all fallen down to the bottom, go ahead and light them up. And enjoy your rewards. Alright guys, that does it for this tutorial. I had a lot of fun putting it together and it took me quite some time, so if you enjoyed it or found it useful, please by all means leave a like and or subscribe. And as always, comments and questions are definitely welcome. Uh, once again, my name is Tango and I will see you guys later.